Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. It's a beautiful day in Beirut, Lebanon. This is such a cool city. The people are friendly, food is delicious. Today we are gonna go on a, a, a little simple tour, a guide. This is gonna be a guide to Beirut. We're gonna visit some of the attractions of the city. We're gonna walk around. We're gonna definitely eat some food. I'm on my way to go see my friend Camel first. He actually has this amazing shop where he curates, it's a boutique grocery store, but he curates some of the best ingredients and products food products from around Lebanon. We're gonna do some taste testing and then from there we'll go around we'll go around the city we're gonna go to the sea. It's gonna be a good day this is gonna be a simple fun guide to Beirut. Olive tree. Today is a pretty warm day in Beirut but it's you still get the Mediterranean sea breeze because Beirut if you look at a map of Beirut it's kind of it's not exactly a peninsula, but it's kind of like a, a triangle of land that goes into the Mediterranean Sea. And so you do have sea on a couple of different sides. And so that provides a breeze passing through the city, uh, which is always nice. And then Camel's shop, which is called Ferial Boutique, should be just down the, just down the road here, right in this neighborhood. Hey. Good morning, Camel. How are you? Good, how are you, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. What does Mune mean? Mune is the concept of preserving all fresh produce ah. for winter time, where there's oh, abundance amazing. during summer. Okay. You either pickle, dry, make vinegars, make syrups, or olive oil. So anything that preserves fresh produce from summertime to winter time. What Camel has done, and I'll let him share more about it, but he's curated some of the best products like the olive oils, the preserved vegetables, the spices from around Lebanon yeah. and brought them into one amazingly beautiful shop boutique oh, that oil. That olive oil comes from Zgharta where we had the ah, Kibbe feast. That yeah. area is yeah. known for having some of the best olive yeah. oil, the olive trees. They're known for their olive trees. Uh, but there's, oh, there's the makdus, there's tomato paste, oh, one of the best chili pastes. I can guarantee that's one of the best chili pastes, chili sauces that you will find in all of Lebanon. Oh, you that? didn't go to that part of Lebanon, Hermel. It's mm. really far northeast. Uh -huh. That's wild za'atar. Ah, and then thyme, dried. Thyme, and then dried. dried. And wow, those, are, those, those are wild. Let it infuse for a bit. This is Makdus, little aubergine stuffed with walnuts, chilies, garlic. I would call it one of the kings of Mune. Exactly. The kings of pickled, preserved dishes in Lebanon, in this entire region of the world. Mm. The flavor is so complex. It's so many, like, juicy, sour, salty, rich flavors coming out of there with the crunch of the walnut. People are lucky enough is. to come to the shop while this guy is here. They get double the tasting. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Taha. He just offers everything for tasting. Awesome. People will leave full. <laughs> Zatar is one of my favorite seasonings. Uh, mixture of thyme, sesame seeds. Are there some other herbs in it too? Sumac. Oh, there's sumac in it too. Oh, wonderful. Oh, well, that's the real taste. And that one is pure pomegranate juice boiled to get this liquid consistency. Before coming to Lebanon, I didn't really even really know of pomegranate molasses. I, I mean, but it's used in so many dishes in Lebanon from kebabs to cabbage rolls to lots and lots of things. Um, and it's such a wonderful ingredient. Oh wow, oh that's amazing. Like, at first, it's sweet. Then like almost instantaneously, it turns sour in your mouth. That's a personal favorite, honestly. I just- That's, and that's all it is, is zatar? That, it's just dried zatar infused in water. Cheers. Cheers. Zatar is such an important uh, ingredient in our culture. We love it. And that's just, it's perfect. It's like slightly, it has a little spice to it. It would be like good for digestion too, right? Like That's the grape juice, but baby grapes. Call it hosrom in, uh, in Arabic. Back in the days, people didn't have lemon trees and lemon juice in the mountains. So that was their secret weapon to add this lemony flavor to dishes. Ah. Woo. Yes. <laughs> That's sour. I love it. It's yeah, that is sour and so complex flavorful.
Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you so much. I got some stuff to take back to Bangkok. I got some of the 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 young grape juice, which is it's so good. It's so much flavor. I got some of the I couldn't resist the pomegranate molasses. It's an amazing flavor as well. I'm going to be using those on salads. Plus some za'atar, some sumac, za'atar and sumac. We're kind of hungry right now, so we're going to go to there's this place that we didn't get to eat at yet, which is famous for their their kebab uh, skewer shawarma, but different types of meats, right? Like Sujuk. shawarma slash sujuk. Sujuk. That's an iconic building in Beirut to your left. It's kind of, it's a museum now. To the right? Yes, this one, the, the one with bullet holes. Ah. And uh, it survived from, uh, from the war, and now they turned it into a museum. Ah, okay. Museum. Those bullet war holes, museum. were they from the war? Exactly. From the yeah. war? So it's like a reminder of the war and that was in Beirut not that long ago. It ended in the uh, early 90s. Early 90s, yeah. okay. This is the Armenian quarter district of Beirut. And, okay. Okay, here we are for lunch. At least first lunch. So this place is called Mano, especially famous for their sujuk, which is one of the greatest meats. It's Armenian in origin, but then very popular throughout Lebanon. It's the pink, the red block of meat, just full of spices on the shawarma spit. And there's also beef and chicken, but I'm, I'm heading straight for the sujuk. You pay first, you get your receipt, and then you come over to the, to the shawarma stations. I've had sujuk quite a few times in Lebanon, but there are always the small sausages, and that's the real way that it's typically eaten. But Mano is famous because they took the sausage to the next level and made the entire shawarma block of it. That's like a just that's like one single piece of meat. It's like a massive, massive salami. It's the same amount of meat, but then they cut it so thin so that when you buy it, you have more, many more layers mm. and the pickles. Oh, wow. Yeah. So good. Like, yeah, slices of sausage. It's, it's like shavings of sausage. You taste the cumin and the chili in there. So amazingly good. And then Camel ordered one more that we're going to try, which is the basterma. Old deli style meat. Um, and then he puts in a bunch of meat pickles in the toasted bread. That looks really good too. Yeah. Oh. Kind of tastes similar to suju. Mm. Similar spices, but a little, but the cold version. And it's more like salted preserve. The uh, bastermo was good, but yeah, the sujuk is the winner. Sujuk was the winner. That Definitely. hot sandwich cannot be beaten shawarma style. Oh man, it was good. From here, oh, Camel said there's one more rush, like a uh, sandwich place, right? It's the place my, my dad used to take me to, and uh, it's my favorite. Also okay. sandwiches, and it's excellent. And it's in this area? It's five minutes away. Okay, so since we're in yep. this area, we might as well. Down this way? Yes. Yes. Hidden places are the best, no? Peru is just such a cool city. Camel says they've been making sandwiches for 60 years. That is One. sandwich experience. Very cool. Nice. They have all the different meats and almost like stews and stuff that you can all pack into different sandwiches and little deli things. Um, a nice seating section, and then that menu just takes up half the restaurant. That's a huge menu. Chamuk. Starting with some chamuk. Chamuk. It's pronounced kind of like chamuk. Shout out to all the Armenians. But there's a big population of Armenians in Lebanon, community, yes. especially in Beirut, right? Yeah. And this is still the Armenian quarter. Oh. Okay. Got it. I didn't embarrass myself. I got it. <laughs> mm. Cheers. Oh yeah, it's good. Very good. Shout out to Fifi. She loves Shen. Ah, she okay. always, uh, the roast beef. Peel back the paper, and it's fully toasted too. Really nicely toasted. Oh, I think it's the mustard in there. The like sweet mustard, the tomato, the beef. 
than the really crispy. Many layers, mm -hmm. not one big chunk of crispy. And it's kind of like pressed down yeah. in the sandwich maker, so it toasts. More comfortable for biting. Sujuk, one more sujuk. That would be my last bite from this afternoon. Sausage form. There's pickles and tomatoes in here. Yeah. This does taste more traditional mm. than the, the shawarma version. It's so good. The, yeah, the cumin, I think it's the cumin that's the most distinct spice in the sujuk. Then this one is almost like, like pan fried kind of tasting sujuk sausage. Okay, we got a little extra chili, Armenian chili sauce. <laughs> almost tastes like tomatoey, sour, wonderful. Mm. It's tasty. Just had some more um, bites on the house. Uh, wow. Pastero. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, something like the cold cut pastero. Yes. Oh, that's we'll beautiful. Try it, like fewer now. Nice. Dark bread, dark sauces. Okay. Yes, they gave us a plate of the only the pastero, like know, deli meat, right? You know what this means? Pastero this means that no. of everything they have in the shop, that's the thing they're most proud of. So they offer it to us to try okay. it. So. so they are most known for the, the pastero. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do it all day. Mm. Really good. Really good. You got chase some pickles. Pickles, mint leaf. It's kind of like, it does sort of have that prosciutto kind of smoothness to it. But with tons of spice. The chili, the cumin. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Man, that was a, that's an amazing place. Just a little hole in the, hole in the wall, a very friendly place. Great um, sandwiches. They were very happy to, to have us. And, cool. um, they were really nice too, yeah. yeah. That chili sauce was delicious. Everything was good. And it just is, it almost has kind of a, I mean, a, a classic deli feel to it. Talking about uh... We jumped out the car and we're going to a place called Al Palamanki, which is a coffee shop. It's a chill spot kind of wait out this really hot afternoon sun, but it's a really, it's a really nice place to be. Okay, we got a seat. Uh, this is, this is, uh, they have, I mean, they have a whole indoor section, which is really nice, but then the, the prized seats at this place are on the terrace, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea, and we got these, Kemal and I are chilling out on the sofa's place, overlooking what is called the Pigeon Rock, which is, uh, it's an iconic site of, of Beirut. It's just a big rock that goes into the water. Yeah, this is wonderful. I'm um, just gonna have a coffee here, have a couple drinks, hang out. They're fresh almonds, not roasted. Fresh almonds soaked in water and cooling and refreshing. Mm. Mm. They're so milky. These are the ones like you could just squeeze and the almond milk would come out. And you can feel that squeezing in your mouth. Oh, do you feel the skin sometimes? Oh, okay. I don't mind. Lebanese coffee. Not a day in Lebanon or in this entire region of the world goes by when I don't have like at least five cups of this type of coffee. And this is one of the ultimate places to have a coffee overlooking Pigeon Rock, the, the waves. You can hear the water. The view is spectacular. This is a chill spot, man. And then these almonds. Actually, I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, you can you can either peel them or you can eat them with the skin on. I've been eating them both ways, but when you peel them, you really do taste like the pure, um, like milkiness of the almond. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Okay. If there wasn't a glass, if there wasn't a glass panel right here, if you look down. I would just be like straight down looking and like looking off the cliff. I would be so spooked out. Luckily because of that glass good thing panel. Glass yeah, good thing there's a glass panel there. Because I am kind of afraid of heights too. You're kind of afraid of heights too? I I'm I'm happy having the glass. <laughs> I'm area. happy having like the heights. glass, yeah. I was just telling Mark that back in the days, tough Beiruti guys would go up to that grotto all the way to the top and then have do the three the dive, the open chest dive. Camel just searched how high that pigeon grotto is. 70 meters high. That's pretty high, especially to jump off like bare chest diving.
This entire downtown area of Beirut, because of the civil war that took place, a lot of the downtown, a lot of the old buildings were destroyed. Some of them have been rebuilt like in similar style. Others, just new buildings are being built and the modern, this is turned into a very modern area of Beirut, a downtown area. Uh, but one of the sites that we're gonna visit and then just walk around the downtown area a little bit uh, is the main mosque. This is one of the biggest mosques in Beirut. It's actually a newer mosque, just like much of this entire area. And what's really nice in downtown is that not only it has very old mosques, but also very old churches. Now you can uh, hear the you can hear the yeah, yeah, the church ring. bells. Yeah, it's, 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 it so is incredible, the diversity. One of the very, very old churches. We're gonna maybe go in the mosque real fast before we walk around downtown a little bit. Wow, step into the mosque and it just opens up into a huge, huge prayer hall. It's it's really huge and what's the most impressive is that chandelier that is a massive chandelier and the roof the design the symmetry wow during the war yeah. everyone, like it, it was deserted everyone left mm. and it was just hard to get everyone back the way it was sure. that's why you start seeing offices and buildings instead of old markets mm. we walked in this is historically the center of the city of beirut there's a monument uh, but it's also the center of parliament here, so security is heavy. There's, but there's, they've recreated some of the buildings the way they used to be. Uh, but then there's also within this complex, there are some ancient buildings, the mosques. Uh, there's a church that we're going to take a look at real fast. There's no traffic, so it's good for walking around. Pigeons, families are hanging out. There's some cafes. Here's one of the ancient uh, churches, St. George Orthodox Cathedral, which is also, it might like be, be equally as old equally as old maybe 500 years old as well um, they're closed actually the doors are closed and they do they actually don't allow any they don't even allow any photography inside anyways even if we were allowed inside uh, but it was constrained dates back to the 14th century well wow. so there's a lot of historical buildings a lot of uh, religious buildings in this square in this heritage circle of Beirut and what's fascinating in a city like Beirut is that you have 500 year old buildings uh, which are right across the street or even within the walking street area, which is shopping. You see all the designer brands here. It's a serious contrast. And then in addition to that, you notice also the, the French influence, the French architecture within the buildings here as well. And this is, this is the type of place where a lot of tourists would come when they visit Beirut yeah, just to walk exactly. around, just to... It's definitely a destination here. People come for shopping, to have coffee. But also what's nice about Beirut is that this is not the only place to go to. There yeah. are different districts you can go to. Badaro, Marm Khayel, mm. uh, second part of downtown. So And like where where we were, where for instance we ate the Sujuk and it's it's almost like a completely different city. Exactly. Like totally different culture, totally different feel. It's just ten it's, minutes away. This is very like European feeling, yeah. very yeah trendy Polish. and it's just 10 minutes away that's and that's the other thing about Beirut is that it's not that big of a city because I mean you go around places are close but the, the diversity is immense Marketplace. it's entire ruins that were um, in the site and then when there was the whole reconstruction of Beirut wow. they decided to maintain the, the ruins and built around them and they, you can still see the whole thing they're beautiful one of the very rare uh, entire Tunisian marketplaces Oh, wow. oh, it's closed right now. Yeah, it is closed. Camel pointed that out. It's right here. It's actually underneath the souk, right? Exactly. Underneath the souk, the recreated market, is an ancient Phoenician souk market. So that must be, if it's Phoenician, it must be like 2,000 years old or more. More. More than 2,000 years old. And then thousands of years of history at that souk. And then the modern side is a very cool playground with hammocks, with swings. Kids are playing. It's kind of like a, this is more of the, the lively public square where people are hanging out, families are walking around, and we're just gonna go into the souk now, the, the market. It is like a modern interpretation of an ancient souk. It's more like an outdoor mall. Little shops, you can, people come here to shop. There's kids stuff, there's clothes. There. From here, we're gonna go back to the car. We're gonna drive over to the Corniche, which is uh, the waterfront of Beirut. Uh, take a little walk there, because then, probably in like an hour or so, we are going somewhere for sunset. This is my first time on the Corniche in Beirut. Um, the sea, actually the sea is really rough today. It's crashing against the, the rocks, against the wall, and you get the sea, even the mist of the sea, 
because the waves are so rough. Uh, but this is, as Campbell, Campbell was telling me, he loves it so much because this is like one of the main, Beirut doesn't have that many public spaces, but the Corniche, the waterfront is one of the best, one of the biggest, one of the most popular public spaces where the entire city of Beirut comes together. I'm just gonna soak in the, the atmosphere, the beauty of this amazing city. Oh, so this is an actual swimming place though, and yeah. well, it could be. Yeah. When, the height, height is high too, though. Micah, you like it? Yeah. Ah! Whoa! Camel is friends with one of the managers at Hotel Albergo, and to finish off the day, she invited us for drinks on the rooftop. It's gonna be wonderful. Thanks, Camel. This hotel is so classic, it has so much character. I actually stayed at this hotel for one night and made a full review, so I'll have that video as well. You come through the restaurant up to the upstairs terrace and then up again to the pool. Immediately the views start. You are on the top floor of the terrace, so it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> yeah, we've been, been walking around today. Feels good to sit down. And yeah, the, this place just has an amazing kind of 360 view. Uh, but as the sun is down, it's cooler. Um, when we opened, it was. Uh, I think Mark would be happy to Okay, see sure. Lebanese food yes. change. <laughs> it's okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for having us. My pleasure. This view is incredible here, all around. Sunset is coming on nicely now. Yeah, this is a chill spot in Beirut. We ended up hanging out for a little while, enjoying the beautiful views of Beirut and the sunset, uh, and that's gonna complete this simple, fun, kind of like an everyday guide to living and doing things in Beirut. And I wanna say a huge thank you to my friend Camel. He, he helped me with many things planning for food around Lebanon, uh, and I really love what he and his family are doing with Federal Boutique. I'll have all the information in the, of everything I did today in this video in the description box below, and I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video, and make sure you subscribe. I'll be publishing more travel tips, more hotel reviews, airplane reviews, and much more travel content, so be sure to subscribe if, you're, if you love to travel. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Beirut, and I'll see you on the next video.